Hello my friends and welcome, let's go straight to the front lines update. Today Ukraine was successful on the northern part of the front lines near to Sergeyevka, taking more ground. Just five months ago Russia was able to take all of the nearby villages by advancing from this place, but finally Ukraine was able to restore the positions. It is a good sign that we have this advancement. Ukraine sent the reinforcements to provide defense for the area and now using the reinforcements for the offensive operations against the Russian army in the area, but Svatova is still far away from the front lines. I think not more than 17 kilometers, no, it's 15 kilometers to that particular town. But Ukraine is still out of the main resources to advance to Svatova. Especially then it conducts the counteroffensive operation on the south. We also we also have some drone videos published on the internet about the Ukrainian advancement near to Sergeyevka, the place that I just showed to you. So Russians tried to withdraw their forces, but most of them were ambushed by Ukrainian artillery. Many of the abandoned Russian vehicles are registered in the place or the vehicles that were totally kaputed. Let's go to the other place. As you can see, there are lots of the Russian brigades and units in Avdivka. It's the hottest place now on the front lines. And we have the update from this place also in favor of Ukraine. But you know what? Some of the experts, for example, from the built source are saying that Avdivka is up to be encircled. I personally think that it's not like that for now and to analyze the situation in Avdivka I will use this 3D map. But before we continue, let me tell you about the partner and the sponsor of my channel. It is the Atlas VPN. You know, the Halloween is very soon, so Black Friday also. That is why Atlas VPN came out with a special Black Friday deal where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for just $149 plus 12 months extra. The deal is valid especially for my followers. It is the lowest price in their history, but what you get is the awesome product. So I tried many VPNs since that time but for Atlas VPN I trust the most. Also Atlas VPN grants me the full access to any kind of series on the Netflix streaming platform. So I don't care about the government restrictions any longer. And sometimes I check the enemy side social media and for that I also use the Atlas VPN. You can basically change your virtual location to any point in the world. And Atlas VPN is so fast that you will never feel the difference whether it's on or off. So my friends, please check out my personal link or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for the lowest price possible, just $149 per month and you'll have 12 months extra. The exclusive Black Friday deal is well just for my followers and for sure it is time limited, so hurry up to join the club. So some of the analytics are claiming that Russia took the railroad under their control, that they were even able to advance to Stepove. However, according to my monitorings, they are still behind the railroad. Moreover, they are unable to establish the full control over this hill. They took just part of it, not deploying their forces, because it's very dangerous for them. The hill is kind of important because it's quite high, it opens the view on in entire Avdiivka city. You may see that city is on a downhill a little and from this hill you may see basically everything what is happening without using the drones if the weather is fine. However, the nearby terrain is mostly flat. But for now Russia is unable to put their forces there as I told you because they will be absolutely demolished by Ukrainian artillery. Here is the industrial part of the city. The pro-Russian analytics already say that Russia established the control over it, which is absolute nonsense. So Bild says that Russia cuts the Ukrainian supplies to the northern part of Avdiivka across this road, but here we have just the railroad and the field road, which we are unable to use during the wet season, so it really doesn't matter. The only road that works for Ukrainian supplies is coming to this part over here. Let me show you from this perspective. It goes goes to Orlivka over here. At the same time this road could be vulnerable because Russia is advancing from this direction as well 
as from this direction towards it to cut it completely. So I'm not saying that the situation in Avdivka is very nice, but it's not catastrophic for now for Ukraine. If Russia would advance to this place, to the industrial part of the city, I think Ukraine would finally need to put the forces out from Avdivka. It will be a disaster for Ukrainian supplies, but for now we keep Russians further away from the place. It's not easy for them to advance in industrial part of the city, but simply there are no any more supplies, no any roads for the wet season. It is critical, so Russia uses this time for their advancement. Also, there are some natural obstacles, those rivers uh, that are not helping to supply this region at all. So the goal of the Russian army is understandable to cut the only supply for Ukraine. With their failed attack attempts, Russia almost lost the first stage of their attack mission in Avdivka, but the bad thing that it seems like they are not willing to stop the attempts. Plus they sent more reinforcements, for now there are more than 12 brigades around Avdivka. There are some theories that Russia was planning those losses at the first stage of their attack. They expanded the bridgehead, by the way, and later on they will advance with more forces and finally will cut the supply for Avdivka. However, it is just the theory and we see that Russia continue to launch their attacks, but those are much smaller compared to what it was around 10 days ago. One more failed Russian attempt uh, to get more ground in Avdivka was reported today. They lost armor vehicles and tanks as usual. My friends, some of the content I am unable to publish on YouTube and you always may support me on Telegram with your subscription and there you'll be updated about the situation in Ukraine and not only. It is for free and there are no any advertisements. According to the independent analytic resources, Russia has the record losses in Avdivka. Combined from all of the front lines, the losses in tanks and BMPs are the highest for this year. And this is also Avdivka, you may see the remains of the Russian vehicles in this area. However, you may see that they are on the Ukrainian positions. It means that they propelled forward and our gas retreated from the area. So Ukrainian army now tries to avoid the direct fighting in the trenches with the Russian army instead using artillery. That's why the gray area expanded and in some places Russia was able to take the ground. But for what coast? Let's go to the Bakhmut area near to Klishivka. Over here where Russia tried to attack Ukrainian positions with their counter-offensive action. Ukraine assaults from the south, but Russia tries to attack our guys from this place unsuccessfully. Let's watch the video. They used quite a lot of the armored vehicles and tanks. They moved very fast, but were totally caputed by Ukrainian artillery. Our guys opened the fire. You may see the landscape over there. It's totally hauled like on the moon. And it is the standard situation for the Russian army. They activated their attacks because soon it will be impossible to advance across the fields during the winter time. Well, occasionally it could be possible. It depends on the actual temperature and the ground. What we see that there is the minefield probably because of the caterpillar damage to this tank. I believe that this tank could run again. There are two ways to handle it, uh, to drop the bomb in this open hatch remotely using the drones or to evacuate this Russian tank, which could be a very dangerous idea. That is why in most of the cases drones just drop something to eliminate the Russian armored vehicles like tanks and other stuff. The fighting activity was also reported on the south in Zaporizhia Oblast. Ukraine tries to go between Kapani and Nistranka for now without the major success in this area. However, we have some of the drone photos too. Zaporizhia direction, you may see the Russian armored vehicle on fire and finally it kaboomed on one of the field roads. You may see that weather for now is perfect for the assault operations. About the Ukrainian landing operation, everything is the same as it was yesterday. The latest update of this military map was not released. I'll try the 3D map to show you the perspective of Ukrainian counter assault. So here is the vector of Ukrainian offensive. Here is one more vector and there is one other before Ukraine advanced from this side. And some reported that Ukraine advanced from Klinky. So here is the large 
large group of the Russian army in this area. That's why the best scenario for Ukraine is to advance from this direction and from this direction as well to cut the Russian army because this is the huge sand pit. Russia will not be able to evacuate their forces or do something with their vehicles. It's even hard to just cross this sand pit with their own feet. It is the biggest desert in Ukraine by the way. So I think that this operation could be possible but probably not this year. Now Ukraine prepares the bridgehead for it to happen. Ukraine is using the rocket artillery systems like M270 or Hymers to target the Russian positions across the Dnieper river. This video was claimed to be filmed in Russia, Siberia. You may see some of the snow out there and they say that it's the transportation of the artillery systems from the North Korea. I think that those are D-30 artillery systems. Pardon if I'm not right. Just while I'm recording this video, some of the shooting was reported in Sevastopol. Probably one more drone attack from Ukraine. So Russians tried to hit the drones. Definitely shooting. Also, the kabooms were reported in Yevpatori and Chernomorsk, also the towns of Crimea. Russia reports that they used the air defense and shut down everything. The North Korean dictator Kim Chen In warns that the Third World War is up to begin. He says that the tensions on the Middle East will escalate to the other territories and will touch the other countries of the world. There was also the big meeting today in Turkey, which was announced yesterday. The president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, was able to gather more than a million people in Ataturk airport. I believe that he wants to show that he is the new Ataturk, he is able to gather such a lot of people. As he says, in support of Palestine, but what I see is the pure speculation about it. Let me read out what he said today. The West is responsible for what is happening in Gaza Strip. The massacre in Gaza Strip is in entirely the work of the West. Well, it's interesting to see because Turkey is actually a NATO country which uses the Western technologies. You know, I was in Turkey many times. I love this country. I love the Turkish people. It is a great country with its history, but I see the wrong development of the country under the ruling of Erdogan. Obviously, it is just my opinion, but I see how Turkey turns from the secular country with the Western values into some sort of the autocracy state. Many experts say that President Erdogan wants to restore the Osman Empire. By the way, Israel and Palestine was the part of that empire. But I don't think that Turkey now has the power to restore it or even the power to fight against Israel. The rhetoric from the Turkish president was quite harsh today towards Israel and the Western countries. He also said about a possible global war. Do you want a war between the Cross and Crescent? He says. Again, he repeated that Hamas is not the terrorist organization for Turkey. At the same time, it is for many of the Arab countries and Muslim countries. He also said that Turkey will declare Israel a war criminal. Revelant work is underway. Well, if they say that Israel is the war criminal, it doesn't mean that the rest of the countries would agree with that. Why do I think that this meeting was mostly the populism from Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the speculation on the Palestine topic? Well, according to my opinion, Turkey economy is not doing well, so Erdogan tries to find some certain enemy to deflect the attention of his people. The national currency Turkish lira was quite stable until 2014, but now the rate is terrible, especially after the Covid crisis. The same goes with the record inflation rates in Turkey. Well, you may see the similar stuff is happening in your country. It's the worldwide trend, unfortunately, but in Turkey it's the record one. People just can't afford buying the same stuff as they used to buy before, and that brings consumer economy to downfall. The the situation with that is quite difficult in Turkey, so President Erdogan, I think, tried to find someone to blame for what is happening, to have the enemy like West and Israel. The similar stuff is actually happening in Russia. They have the enemy, so Ukraine and also the West. The Russian economy just going down the hill under the sanctions and under the incompetence of the Russian leaders. But the majority of Russians still do support Putin because he is fighting against the 
aggressor against the Ukraine and West. Here, unfortunately, exactly the same rhetorics from Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Russia has the Russian peace, Erdogan has the Turkish peace, or the Great Osman Empire peace, or the Great Tehran peace. It doesn't really matter. So, after this harsher rhetorics uh, towards Israel, will Turkey attack it? No. All of that stuff was mostly said for the local Turkish people, for them to unite around their Sultan Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and for him personally to keep the stable power in Turkey. By the way, Turkey was one of the first countries that recognized Israel as the country. About the big war between the Cross and uh, Crescent, as Erdogan said, it will never happen. He generalized this term on purpose, mostly for propaganda. There are many Crescent, so Muslim countries who are allies to the West. By the way, Turkey is also the ally of the West. As I say to you, NATO member, Western technologies, Western-made weaponry. The Turkish army doesn't exist without the Western-made spare parts. So for me, I wouldn't say that it's funny to watch uh, this meeting today. I understand that people of Palestine are suffering, but I think they are used by many of the politicians for their particular purpose purposes right now. They think that it's the proper time for the rallies like that and comments. In general, politicians doesn't really care about the people, they care about the votes. Let's continue with the Middle East topic because I think that it is very important for each of us. So Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, confirmed the start of the ground operation of the Israeli Defense Forces in Gaza Strip. Here we have the military map, so they went inside the Gaza Strip on the north and also somewhere in the middle. Honestly, I expected the Israeli forces to retreat to Day, but they stayed in the Gaza Strip. They also continue bombing Gaza, causing the massive devastation. And I may understand uh, the people who support uh, Palestine, because those attacks are bringing the severe devastation to that civilian infrastructure as well. I do not separate the lives of the people who live in Gaza with the lives of Israeli people or people in Ukraine or in the United States. What will happen in Gaza with the ground operation is the more devastation, more life losses. But Israel doesn't see the other way out how to deal with Hamas, unfortunately. Again, I'm telling that this is the result of the previously made mistakes. The mistakes that allowed the terrorist organization as Hamas to appear in Gaza. It was only possible, obviously, with support of Iran and Russia, because Hamas is using the Russian-made weaponry as well. And also it was possible because Israel didn't react at the proper time with much less actions. The Israeli army is absolutely capable to take Gaza under their control, obviously with losses, but unfortunately it will not change the situation dramatically in favor of Israel. Actually, the circumstances could be not so good for Israel. If somehow Israel would get rid of Hamas organization, there is no guarantee that the other organization of that type will not appear in Gaza. Plus, Israel will damage its reputation if they continue to bomb the infrastructure of Gaza, causing thousands of losses of civilians. So I don't really see the good decision for Israel right now or the way out for this situation to be resolved very soon. In general perspective, this conflict is unstoppable for decades and maybe even centuries. Israel also stops the cooperation with Starlink after Elon Musk tweeted that Starlink will support the connectivity to the international recognized organizations in Gaza. If those organizations are internationally recognized, if those are not the Hamas, I think that in that case uh, Starlink may provide the internet to those organizations, why not? However, this tweet from Elon Musk I would say crazy, because he blames the United States of America for putting their military bases around Iran. What a peaceful country Iran under the ruling of the dictators. So here Elon Musk really needs to decide whether he supports autocracy or democracy. And Hamas plus Hezbollah are the proxies 
States of Iran. So Elon Musk, who are you supporting? By the way, United States of America put the bases out from Afghanistan, so it's the old picture. By the way, Elon Musk wants to reform Twitter and make it as the date app, the digital bank and basically everything. As analog, he will use the WeChat, which is valid in China only. Indeed, WeChat is the social media platform, it's your online banking and everything. But I don't think that it will fit the Western culture with this huge monopoly of X. And other platforms like Google and Meta will not let it to happen. My friends, everything what I say in my videos is just my personal opinion. Again, I might be wrong. If you have your own opinion, welcome to the comments. But at the same time, don't forget to press the like to this video and also please check out my personal link. It's available in the video description just below where you may find the awesome Black Friday deal from the Atlas VPN. It is time limited, so hurry up to join the club. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.